Hey, it's Matt Decker with Leverage Wealth Management. Today we are talking about premium finance life insurance. This is the second video in our premium finance life insurance series. And this one is going to be all about the risks associated with premium finance life insurance. And there are quite a few risks associated with premium finance. And as I said in the introduction to this whole series, if there's one thing that you absolutely want to make sure that you get right, it's premium finance life insurance. Because if you get this wrong, the effects can be catastrophic. If this is done incorrectly, you can find yourself upside down very quickly and in a really difficult position. That's not to say that it can't work. It's just to say that of all the financial vehicles out there, this one contains quite a bit of leverage and because it contains leverage, if it's done improperly, it can really get you in trouble quickly. So let's outline the risks real quickly as it relates to premium finance. The first one we will discuss today is all about clients liquidity. You have to have liquidity. And when we say liquidity, what we really mean is you have to have cash in order to post as collateral. If you do not have cash to post as collateral, you can find yourself in trouble extremely quickly in a situation where you are maybe pending default on this whole strategy. So first we're gonna talk about liquidity. The second thing that we're gonna talk about is the bank spread. I'll explain that later. Bank spread is the second risk with premium finance. The third thing that we'll go ahead and discuss is going to be the interest rate assumptions that are being used for your projections. Uh, this is huge. So what's being used for the interest rate assumptions? The fourth thing that we're gonna talk about is policy performance. And then finally, we're gonna discuss policy design. Now I've got some examples for you. We'll go through some different screenshots and just some different illustrations and some different projections so you can see exactly what we're talking about. But those are the five things that we're going to cover when it comes to premium finance and the risks that are associated with premium finance. So liquidity is extremely important because you will almost always be required to post collateral with the bank when starting a premium finance strategy. There are exceptions to this rule, but by and large, you will be required to post collateral. So I want you to focus in on column L. I'll highlight it here for you. You can see there that it's the projected collateral needed with a bank discount. So what that means is they're just saying, how much is your policy worth? and how much is your outstanding loan balance, and the difference is how much collateral that you're gonna need. So what most people see when they look at a premium finance projection, illustration, uh, whatever you wanna call it, is column L. And you can see that the collateral starts at $306,000, and it slowly dwindles away by the time you get to year five, there's no collateral that's required. So column L is what most people see when they look at collateral projections. However, column L is showing a best case scenario because what they're doing is they're showing a relatively um, conservative LIBOR plus bank spread. So, so they're not jacking the LIBOR rate up, okay? So that's one of our risks that we're gonna talk about later. They're keeping the LIBOR rate relatively stable. So they're assuming interest rates are good for you. And they're also assuming that the policy performs every single year, meaning that there aren't uh, any zero years, okay? So you're getting a credit in your policy every single year. So two of the bigger risks that we're gonna talk about later, policy performance, and interest rate assumptions, those are kind of taken out of the equation in column L. And so if you only focus on column L, or if you only get a projection that, that shows something similar to what we're looking at here, you would see this premium finance design and you would think, okay, my high watermark for collateral is $306,000 in year one, and then it's gonna be 200,000 in year two, 118 in year three, 12, and then it's nothing. I can post that collateral for four or so years and be and basically have a policy that's then gonna pay for itself and I'm in the clear, okay? That's what most clients see when they look at premium finance strategies. 
The problem is again, this projection doesn't take into account the two biggest risks on premium finance strategies. That is gonna be interest rates and policy performance. So what I want you to do is I want you to key in on the very next column, column M, and you can see that this is a stress test that basically uses a 1980s interest rate scenario. So it takes the interest rate assumptions and it jacks them up to what interest rates were like in the 1980s, and it shows you how your collateral changes if interest rates rise sharply. And so this is a key, key stress test that every single client should be looking at. And you can see that right out of the gate, our collateral is not 306, it's 350. It goes up to 520 in year two. It has a high watermark of $655,000. I'm sorry, no, it actually gets up to $979,000 um, the year before collateral is basically over. So that's obviously a much different scenario than what you see in kind of the rosy, everything works out just fine, your policy performs, interest rates don't go up scenario that most people see. It's the only thing they see. It's kind of the best case scenario. You have to look at other considerations. And so this is why liquidity is key. If you get into this contract and interest rates suddenly spike, you're going to find yourself in a position where in year two, you were planning on posting $212,000 in collateral. You're going to have to come up with an extra $310,000 of cash to post as collateral. If the client or if you are not liquid, that is a huge, huge problem. You're either forced to sell off assets, which is a terrible scenario. Uh, you're forced to go to a bank and get a letter of credit, which they'll charge you between one to 2% for, if you can even get it, or you have to default on this whole strategy. You forfeit the policy, the money that you paid out of pocket, and you forfeit the collateral that you posted. So that's obviously a terrible scenario. Now let's look at the next stress test, which is the next column over, column N, I'll highlight it for you. So what we're looking at here is our projected collateral given a Great Depression scenario. So this is not stress testing interest rates, this is actually stress testing the policy performance. So it's saying, well, what if our policy doesn't get a six or a 7% every single year? What if we get seven out of you know, the first 12 years, what if there's zeros? What if we have no performance seven out of the first 12 years, similar to a Great Depression where the, the market was down several years in a row and it continued to kind of ping around and it really had no performance for almost an entire decade, about 12 years. What does our collateral look like then? Well, you can see it goes from 306 in year one to 352 in year one, then 339, 367, 428, finally all the way up to $521,000. And then later on, it gets up to a million dollars, okay? So this is assuming a bad uh, policy performance stretch of 10 to 12 years. It's a Great Depression scenario. And you can see it's the same consideration. If you've only seen your projected collateral based on you know, good loan assumptions, good interest rate assumptions, and great policy performance, and you don't see what can happen if the policy doesn't perform as planned right out of the gate, you can get yourself into a real problem. And that's why liquidity is absolutely crucial for these plans. If you are considering a premium finance policy, or if you already have one, you have to make sure that you have liquid assets on hand that you are able and willing to post as collateral in case this policy does not perform as it's intended. Now what's really cool about both column M and column N, in both cases, this ends up still working out meaning the policy doesn't blow up on you. The policy actually still performs for you. You just have to have the liquidity to be able to post the collateral and let the policy work for you over time. So in both cases, 1980s interest rate scenario and in the Great Depression scenario, this strategy actually works as long as you are liquid enough to post the collateral. So that's why liquidity is our number one risk when it comes to premium finance. You have to be able to account for needing to post more collateral than projected, not only be able to, but you have to be willing to do it. And it has to be cash on hand. Everything else makes it much, much more difficult. Okay, let's talk about our next 
two risks in the same shot, bank spread and interest rate assumptions. Bank spread and interest rate assumptions, really simple to understand. The bank spread is essentially how much is the bank charging you over and above LIBOR because most of these loans are gonna be LIBOR based. And so when you're looking at these projections, typically what you're going to see uh, to determine the bank spread is gonna say something like LIBOR plus you know, 2.75 or LIBOR plus, you know, 1.5 or whatever the number is. This 2.75, this 1.5, that is the spread. That is what the bank is making on the loan. They're charging you LIBOR plus a spread. So the risk here is that the bank spread is really unfavorable. And this actually happens more often than you might think. So let's go to a scenario. This is something that a, a client sent me. This is a premium finance projection uh, from a premium finance vendor, and this was sent to me in 2016. So in 2016, LIBOR was less than one. But what's important here is to look at both the spread and the interest rate assumptions, because in both cases, I think that this is a pretty terrible design. So we're looking at column nine, I'll highlight it for you here. LIBOR, uh, 30 day LIBOR plus 250 basis points. So what that means is your loan is going to be the 30 day LIBOR rate plus 2.5%. So whatever the 30 day LIBOR is, plus 2.5%. Again, this was sent to me in 2016, so that's why the numbers are much lower. 250 basis points is a relatively huge spread when it comes to premium finance, especially on a 30-day LIBOR rate. That 30-day LIBOR rate changes every single month and it can spike quickly. It's very reactionary to interest rate environments and interest rate changes. So a 30-day LIBOR rate plus 250 basis points is a pretty risky loan, okay? It's a big spread and the rate changes every single month. So it's a pretty risky option to choose on one of these policies. But over and above that, I want you to key in on the interest rate assumptions here. Okay, keep in mind, this is 2016. So year one is 2016, two is 17, three is 18, four is 19. So I'm recording this in 2019, year four, and you can see, I'll highlight it here. Year four, the interest rate assumption is 3.61%. Okay, 3.61%, that means the 30-day LIBOR, plus 2.5%, they're projecting to be 3.61, okay, 3.61. Well, what is it actually right now, today? Right now, today, the 30-day LIBOR rate plus 250 basis points is 4.9%, 4.9%. That's 1.3% higher than projected, and that 1.3% is going to be applied to a $1.4 million loan balance. That is a huge difference in interest because that loan balance is gonna to continue to grow. And what's really crazy about this whole thing is look at this interest rate, it's capped at 4.33, not in reality. They're assuming that it never goes higher than 4.33, that the LIBOR rate plus 250 basis points never goes above 4.33%. And here we are in year four, and we're already at 4.9. So this is a perfect example of a bank spread that's too high and interest rate assumptions that are terribly underinflated. This type of design, were it implemented, would be a prime candidate to blow up at some point because those two things have a direct effect on the collateral that is needed for the policy, have a direct effect on the collateral that's needed for the policy. And if you see this projection, it's assuming that you will never have to post collateral. But guess what? If we had implemented this policy, and if we had purchased this policy in 2016, the client would have seen a projection showing no collateral needed ever, that's column 13, 14, no collateral needed ever, and yet we'd be in year four, and guess what? They'd have to come up with around two to $300,000 in collateral because the loan assumptions and the policy performance were way off, okay? This was done terribly, and that's a great reason why these policies blow up. A client sees something where they never have to post collateral four years in because you know garbage in, garbage out, their projections are garbage and now they have to actually post collateral and guess what? This policy blows up on them because they don't want to post collateral. Either they don't want to or they can't because they're not liquid, which goes back to our first issue. So the second risk as it relates to premium finance strategies is what is your interest rate? 
What is your bank spread? You have to get a good bank spread, less than 250 basis points, and you have to use realistic interest rate assumptions going forward. Otherwise, you're gonna find yourself in trouble. We're gonna tackle the last two risks in tandem. Again, policy performance and policy design because they go hand in hand. Policy design affects policy performance, and policy performance by itself is not really something you can control. Uh, so there are easy ways to kind of build in some padding on your premium finance projections to make sure that this is still a strategy that you want to pursue. You got to go in with eyes wide open. So let's start with policy performance. So what I want you to key in on here is the cash value column, second column from the right. I'll highlight it here. This is a a, a just a policy design that's showing 6.9% returns every single year, okay? 6.9% returns every single year. But what I want you to key in on is year three and four, okay? So year three and four cash value, 1.48 million, 2.1 million. And again, this assumes 6.9% every single year, okay? No zeros, none of that. So the issue with policy performance is not that your policy is going to perform poorly and blow up. That's, that's not the issue when it comes to premium finance because this is a long-term strategy and I'm extremely confident that over the long term, these policies are gonna perform exceptionally well. So that's not the issue. The issue is not long-term. The issue is what if the policy doesn't perform well in the short term and how does that affect the first risk that we talked about, liquidity, and your ability to post collateral? That is the issue. So again, 6.9% every single year, key in on years three and four, 1.48, 2.1 million. Those cash value numbers, 1.48, 2.12, that is what's used to offset the loan balance. So whatever the difference is between the loan and your cash surrender value, that's how much collateral you have to post. Whatever the difference is between your loan balance and your cash value, that's the collateral that you have to post. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than that because they're not gonna use the entire cash value, they're gonna use a large portion of it, but just set that aside for now. Loan balance minus cash value equals collateral, okay? So if you only see a projection that shows 6.9% every single year, you're basing your collateral assumptions off of this cash value where your policy is performing every single year. So what happens if instead of getting 6.9% every single year, you get a 0% for the first three years? It's happened before. If you get a 0% your first three years, your year three and four cash value goes down from 1.48 down to 1.23. It goes down from 2.12 down to 1.86. So what's important? What's important here is by your policy not performing in those first couple years, you're gonna have to post an extra $200,000 in collateral. That $200,000 in collateral needs to be in the form of cash. So not only do you have to be able to post it, but you should be willing to post it because there's a high likelihood that you're not going to get a flat 6.9% every single year. The reality is actually, or the, the, the likelihood that you get the 6.9 on the nose every single year is virtually next to nothing. It's gonna be you know up and down, it's gonna be all over the place. You might average it, but you're not gonna hit it on the nose every single year. So you have to account for the policy not performing in those first couple of years because it will have a substantial impact on the collateral that you're going to have to post, okay? Let's take it one step further. So this is a policy that's designed relatively well, okay? It's designed relatively well, but we're showing 0% in the first three years. 1.2 million in cash, 1.8 million in cash. Remember, loan balance, minus cash value, that's the collateral that you're gonna to have to post. Now, obviously, I'm not telling you what your loan balance is here, but you can kind of guess. I mean, 562 by three years, call it 1.65 million plus some interest. So you're talking about around $400,000 in collateral in this, in this example versus you know 200,000 in this example if the policy performs every single year. Okay, so what if not only your policy doesn't perform, but what if the agent designs it to max out his commission. 
because I see it all the time. So what if not only your policy doesn't perform well, but it's designed the wrong way. It's designed for maximum commissions. It's not designed for maximum cash accumulation. It happens all the time. Well, here is what that would look like. You go from 1.2 million and 1.8 million to 1 million and 1.6 million. 1.2 and 1.8 to 1 million and 1.6. So this is a policy that has three zeros in a row and it's designed in order to max out the agent's commission. Compare this policy to a policy that's designed the right way but showing 6.9% every single year. You, know, you might have been shown 1.4 and 2.1 million in terms of your cash value in years three and four. And if it's done the wrong way and you get bad policy performance, your collateral that's gonna be required is around $400,000 more than what you were originally shown. Now the issue here is that you didn't know that that was possible and you started this plan not knowing that your collateral could be $400,000 more than you were shown. And that's why the number one risk that I have outlined when it comes to premium finance is liquidity because these strategies work. These are long-term strategies. They do work as long as you can stay liquid when things don't go exactly as planned. And here's what I would submit to you. The clients that see stress tests, the clients that see policies that don't perform well, the clients that see policies that have really poor interest rate assumptions, meaning the interest rate goes really high really quickly. The clients that see the ugly side of premium finance and still decide to move forward because they understand the risks, they understand the liquidity that's required of them, and they're willing and able to post cash as collateral if something doesn't go exactly as planned. Those clients end up happy, and this is a huge part of their overall financial strategy. The clients that never see a stress test the clients that only see projections that show pie in the sky numbers, really low loan rate assumptions, uh, the clients that see levelized policy performance, you know, 7% every single year for the life of the policy, and they never see a design where interest rates go up or the policy doesn't, they oftentimes find themselves in situations where they're getting collateral calls and they aren't either not able or not willing to post cash as collateral. And in those instances, what happens are, Clients are extremely upset, extremely frustrated, and this strategy typically is going to blow up on those clients simply because they were not prepared for what can go wrong. So let me go back to that first kind of projection that I showed you that has all those stress tests. So this is a design that's done really well. And I actually, I zoomed out. Before when I showed it, I was zoomed in so you could see the numbers. This is a design that's done really well. Projected bank margin, 1.755%. Much better than the other one that I showed you at 2.5%. We're using 6.4 instead of you know 6.97, 7.2%. So it's a safer assumption on the crediting side. So this is a good projection. These numbers are solid. But if I only showed you the assumptions and I cut off columns M and N that showed the stress tests, even though this is a good design, you would go into this policy without having your eyes wide open. You'd go into this policy thinking that the collateral required is 306, 212, 119, and 12. And while it may work that way, if you don't see the next two columns that have the stress test, and if you're not aware what can happen in these policies, again, it still works. You still, you still win in the end because it's a long-term strategy. The policy still performs over time, but if you don't see what can happen with your collateral requirement, and you go into this policy thinking that column L is what it's going to be, and you got nothing to worry about, this policy is not going to do what you want it to do. Even though the policy is good, the design is good, the bank margin is good, even though all that is true, this is not going to be something that you like. 
because you don't know what can go wrong. If you see this projection and you see column M, the 1980s interest rate stress test, if you see column N, the Great Depression stress test, and you understand how your collateral can change based on how the policy performs, based on how interest rates perform, if you understand the relationship between the loan and your policy cash value and you decide to move forward, you're gonna love this strategy. And what's really crazy about the whole scenario is those two situations, the strategy, the numbers are all identical. The strategy and the numbers are all identical. Nothing has changed. The only thing that has changed is you actually understand what you have, what the risks are. And if you move forward knowing the risks, you will be prepared to maneuver throughout the life of this strategy and it will be something that you enjoy that works long term. So let's recap the risks of premium finance. Number one is liquidity. You have to have cash to be able, and you have to be willing and able to post that collateral. Make sure you have a good bank spread. You're gonna see LIBOR plus a spread. You want the spread to be as small as humanly possible. Make sure that the bank is using good interest rate assumptions, that they're inflating interest rates over time to give you some cushion. And then of course, make sure that your policy performance is kind of dialed in. Build yourself in some cushions. Show some zeros on the policy performance to know what your collateral is going to be if you get some zero years inside your policy and make sure that the policy is designed for maximum cash, maximum income, and minimize those broker commissions. If you can understand and if you can put a number on those five risks, if you can articulate those five risks and you still want to move forward with a premium finance design, you're probably gonna end up with something that you really, really like and enjoy that will be with you for a very long time. If you have a premium finance policy and you need to get it reviewed, if you need your strategy reviewed because you're not sure that these five risks were taken into account or done properly, you can always go to my website, leveragewm.com slash premium finance. I will link it below and I'll also put a call out up at the top right hand corner of this video. You can click there. It'll take you right to my webpage where you can fill out a quick quiz. It'll capture some information and see if a premium finance review is right for you. If you haven't already done so, like this video, subscribe to my channel, share this with your friends, comment below, and let me know what you think. Did I miss any of the risks surrounding premium finance? And what's the next series that you want me to tackle? This has been Matt Decker with Leverage Wealth Management. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, and I will talk to you again on the next installment of our premium finance life insurance series.